Welcome to Strange New England. I'm your host, Megan Burby. Are you bald? Do you know any bald men? Of course, there is usually a perfectly rational medical reason for the loss of hair in the male of the species. Male pattern baldness, alopecia, or too much testosterone, among others. Before we discovered the scientific reasons for hair loss, we used stories to help us understand it. And this tale from the logging camps of northern New England and the Maritimes is one of the most famous. Remember, be kind to our fine feathered friends. Any bird could be somebody's mother. Many of the animals of New England have their own story, with each one reflecting either the animal's personality or their place in history. Both prehistoric and historic New Englanders have always seen a part of their own personality when they watched animals in their natural environment, and it is that perceived relationship that brings us a very strange tale from the northern woods from the time of the big logging camps. One specific species of bird, common to the deep woods of Maine and Canada, has become a more obscure story as the logging camps in New Brunswick and Maine were closed. Back when logging was a larger industry in the north, however, the stories associated with the Canada Jay, or Gorby, were commonplace among the men who worked their trade in the deep forests. Because the Gorby is a deep woods bird that doesn't venture into urban settings, its stories became obscured as the lumberjacks moved out from the logging camps and into alternative jobs. It was the work of folklorist Sandy D. Ives, founder of the Northeast Archives of Folklore and Oral History, that helped record the stories of the Gorby and saved them from being forever lost. Through the audio and text recordings that Dr. Ives made, information about the bird's behavior and its impression on New Englanders can be seen through the tall tales it inspired. The first aspect of the legends are the folk names the Gorby has been given. Grey Jay, Camp Robber, Venison Hawk, Hudson Bay Bird, Caribou Bird, Moose Bird, Meat Bird, Grease Bird, Woodsman's Friend, Whiskey Jack, or Whiskey John. The original Native American name for this bird is the whisk e jack which is similar to Whiskey Jack. Both names are derived from the bird's call. Other unusual traits that the Gorby possesses are further implied by their names. The name may come from either Scotland or France. It might be either from the French-Canadian pronunciation of the French word corbeau, for the bird who is related to ravens and crows. The Scottish origin might come from the word gorb, which has a double meaning, glutton and unfledged bird. According to some sources, this bird helped hunters to find moose or caribou. This bird would signal to a hunter where they could be found, and in exchange, the hunter would give meat to this bird to eat. Those who tell this story suggest that this is because the gorby is not satisfied with eating ticks and fleas off moose and caribou, and wants a more substantial meal. The Native Americans believed this animal had a powerful spirit living inside of it and would listen for its call while hunting, as well as give the bird meat after the kill was made. Another Native American legend associated with the gorby states that cold weather comes when someone pulls a few feathers off of the bird's chest. Whether this was a magical spell or a warning against harming the bird is not made clear. In later years... When logging camps were more commonplace in rivers across Maine and New Brunswick, the Gorby did not have to get hunters to give them filling meals anymore. It was said that whole flocks would fly out of the trees and steal food straight from the lumberjacks' hands and lunch pails, while only one or two would show up on the first day. More and more would appear to make off with the lunches of the lumberjacks as time wore on. They would also hide in the clothes of the lumberjacks, not caring if these were worn or not. The origin of the names, Woodsman's Friend 
and Camp Robber is probably inspired by these antics. For lumberjacks, these birds were a great source of amusement. Most were happy to see these birds, despite losing their food to them, and were entertained by their tricks in the air and on the ground. In remote and quiet forests, such entertainment was certainly a welcome sight. Others were not happy to feed such a feathered thief. Whatever a lumberjack's feelings were about the gorby, there was a strict taboo against harming these birds. The work of the lumberjack was fraught with danger, and as a result, superstition ran rife. The bird was regarded as a lucky animal, like the albatross from the rhyme of the ancient mariner. Sometimes it was because the bird was a lumberjack who came back from the dead to rejoin his companions. Others believed that if they hurt a gorby, the injury would be returned on them. This retelling of The Man Who Plucked the Gorby has elements drawn from the book Willow the Wisp, Folk Tales and Legends of New Brunswick by Carol Spray, and the records left by Dr. Sandy D. Ives. There was once a gorby who frequented a logging camp named Old Ferguson. He was named after a lumberjack who had died at work. The lumberjacks believed this bird was a reincarnation of their dead comrade, because he had a big appetite, and because he wore a gray coat and black hat that reminded them of the bird's feathers. They enjoyed Old Ferguson's antics as a part of their midday meal, and welcomed him and the flocks of gorbies as if they were equals. But a new lumberjack came to work at the camp, who was not pleased with entertaining this bird. He is given many names, but let us call the man Archie Stackhouse. He grew angry with this bird's habit of snatching biscuits from his hand as he was about to eat them. Archie swore he would kill old Ferguson once he got his hands on him. When his comrades warned him not to harm the bird for fear of bad luck, he scorned this as a foolish belief. It is also relevant to mention that Archie Stackhouse had handsome black hair he was particularly proud of. According to Carol Spray's version, Old Ferguson's favorite snack was biscuits soaked in whiskey. One cold winter day, the bird was fed this treat, and soon grew so drunk he could not fly straight. One kindly lumberjack took this bird into a mitten and let him sleep off his binge. But Archie took his chance to make good on his threats. He seized the small drunk bird and ripped off the feathers from his back and belly, leaving him very naked, with only wing feathers spared. The bird tried to fly up with the feathers he had left, but fell down and died instantly. Dr. Ives' records state that the poor plucked bird merely died of exposure overnight in February. The lumberjacks were appalled at this turn of events, but Archie went to bed, satisfied with himself. In the morning, there was a surprise waiting for Archie. He saw in the mirror next to the wash basin that all of his coveted black hair had fallen off of his head, leaving his chin and head bare. He never grew his head of hair back again. According to Carol Spray's telling, if there was a lumberjack who was bald or lacked hair, he would usually be asked, are you the man who plucked the gorby? As a joke. An alternative version from an article written by Dr. Ives included another character, a bad-tempered Frenchman who gave Archie a sound thrashing after he awoke to find his head bare. In the audio retelling recorded by Dr. Ives, Archie is given a specific job at the logging camp. He is described as a Wangan man, who was the manager of the outpost store. He was responsible for minding and managing supplies for the whole camp as well as selling goods to the lumberjacks. Even in those camps, the exchange of money was still a necessity. 